Hi, my name is Corrine Mori. I'm a terminated nurse from BC. I was terminated last fall for refusing to comply with the mandatory vaccination. I would like to update you on a few things in case you have missed some of the events that have happened over the last week that are quite significant. Um, I think you might have picked up that the federal health minister Duclos made an announcement this week that um, Dr. Teresa Tam is now acknowledging that the effectiveness of vaccinations wane significantly after two months. And as a result, uh, the federal government will be changing the definition of fully vaccinated from the two dose requirement to instead, um, it is now becoming up to date. And that will be determined on the recommendation of the government. So th theoretically at this point, anyone who has received a vaccination dose more than uh, and the, your last one was more than six months ago, you are now considered to be unvaccinated. And as a result, the uh, federal minister also said that they are worried that the third dose uptake has not gone very well. And so they are going to be creating policy to make sure by the fall that we can get uh, more uptake. As a result, um, there will be changes to your status. At the same time, interestingly enough, the federal government re uh, removed the mandatory vaccination policy from the federal employees. So as of June 20th, all of those employees are going to be able to go back to work. Now we move to the BC government, who now is the only place in Canada and maybe the world that is still forcing mandatory vaccination on provincial employees. So we, I don't know if you realize, but Bonnie Henry last Friday put out a new public health order. And I'm a little bit concerned about the language because some of the statements I'm going to read to you are what she put in the health order. So um, some of them are children under the age of five are will remain unprotected from infection until a vaccine is available for them. That is totally false. We know that children have been the most unaffected population because of their natural immunity system. She made another statement, unvaccinated people in close contact with other people promotes the transmission of SARS-CoV-2. Um, I'm hoping that Bonnie could update her biology because it's actually only infected people that can transmit the infection, not just because you're unvaccinated. And we have multiple streams of data that is showing that it is the vaccinated mostly that are in hospital with needing acute care. So uh, those kinds of statements have been a bit concerning. Um, there was also one that stated people who are, un are unvaccinated are a greater risk to other people than vaccinated people. This is hate speech. There is absolutely no evidence of that. And I'm also going to include in this post a link to a freedom of information request that was finally released. And in that freedom of information request is an email thread between Bonnie Henry, the BCCDC and health authorities back in January 2021, where they were discussing how many adverse events were occurring in the population to the point where there, our numbers were actually higher than what was being stated in US. And as a result, uh, there was significant discussion back and forth as to how to address this. I'd like you to make note that since January 2021, in no communication from Bonnie Henry, has there been any statement provided from her informing you of the risk that is associated with vaccination. This is negligence. And I, well, I could say what else we, we are considering this to be, but I'll let you come up with your own conclusion on that. We are now in a state of collapse, healthcare collapse in BC, because the health authorities 
decided to terminate healthcare workers who were unvaccinated. Now, this was not a requirement from the public health officer. This was a decision from health authorities. Now, what I want you to know is you as a taxpayer, you pay your money to the government and they in, in return are supposed to provide services to you. So the health authorities are contracted to deliver health care to you. Now, what they've done instead is they have terminated nurses. Uh, our numbers are showing there are 8,000 less nurses in the system than last year. This is between terminations, early retirement, and stress leaves. So we have a considerable amount of I'm not even discussing doctors, x-ray, all the other healthcare sectors, just nurses. So as a result, you are seeing in the news that there's critical staffing shortages. So ERs have been closing, ORs have been shut down. Cancer patients are not being seen until the fall. This is all a direct result because there are no nurses, not enough nurses in the system to deal with all the needs. Now, this means that the services that you're paying for are not being delivered by the health authorities. And as you can see, uh, all across Canada now, everyone's been returned back to work except here. So now we're moving into the issue of uh, nurses and how do we get to get back to work. <laughs> and unfortunately, we are under a union who is uh, legally responsible to handle all of our interactions with our employers. And currently, they will not discuss this publicly. They will not acknowledge that we are uh, here. <laughs> and there's been a couple pieces of information that has come to us that I find interesting. So one, we've been told they have had uh, the chance of them getting our grievances through the system has been slowed down because they're too busy dealing with critical staffing shortages. And two, our um, bargaining agreement ended this year and they're going into new negotiations with the government in the fall and they don't want to jeopardize anything. So from what I understand, they have decided that trying to get a dollar an hour more for, for more for nurses is more important than having nurses in the workplace to take care of you. This is a problem. So we as nurses have tried to hold our union accountable to make sure that you are being provided the health care that you deserve, but we are being ignored. So if you feel like there's something you want to do about this, we've had no response from the union. Maybe the public will. Thanks for your help.